All right, let's open our Bibles, if you have a Bible, to Proverbs 14. Proverbs chapter number 14. Tonight we're going to preach on the folly of fools. Some of you missed the lesson when we preached on working hard, so you got you kind of got out of that one. But tonight I've got you on the fools. So we'll try to get some help tonight. The Bible gives us a lot of material in the book of Proverbs regarding foolishness and fools. As a matter of fact, um, when you look through Proverbs, the word fool or folly or foolish occurs over 60 times in Proverbs. That's nearly half of all the references in the Bible. Just in Proverbs, fool and foolish and folly. And so it's amazing when you go through here and look this up, and of course I've gone through, I have a lot of verses. We'll turn to some of them. I'll read some of them. We can't look at every last one of them, but hopefully we can get God's opinion and God's designation of what a fool is and what to avoid and get some insight on this subject. Now, we know Scripture says, Jesus Christ said, you know, don't call somebody a fool. And a lot of people misquote that passage from Matthew chapter number 5. And he says, he talks about without cause in Matthew chapter number 5. And so a lot of times people say, don't call anybody a fool. The Apostle Paul actually called the Galatians fools and the Corinthians. Now, that's a pretty strong rebuke from a preacher. So don't get mad if I call you a fool. I'm not meaning it personally necessarily. However, sometimes, and I'll put myself in there as well, we all do some foolish things. And foolish things means we do things of a fool. So let's look at it. Proverbs 14, verse 8 will be a jumping off spot. Proverbs 14, verse number 8. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Now that word fool and folly actually comes from a Latin word which means bellows. It describes somebody with puffed up cheeks. It's basically saying a fool is a windbag. <laughs> That's basically what he's saying. A fool is somebody with a lot of hot air. And so when you think about this, uh, obviously you can tie in um, fools to a lot of people that you probably run into, maybe even work with, or maybe in your family. I don't know. Um, there was an atheist one time, he was complaining to this Christian, you know, how y'all got all the holidays. You have Easter and you have Christmas and even Thanksgiving and all these kind of things. We atheists don't have anything. The Christian said, you're mistaken. Yes, you do. You have a holiday, April Fool's Day. The fool have said in his heart, there is no God, right? Now, nobody is born a fool per se, except in the sense that every child is foolish, Proverbs 22, verse number 15, the Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. It's just natural for a kid to act a fool, right? Just, you know, saying stupid things, running around, doing stupid stuff, throwing stuff, eating stuff they shouldn't eat, saying things they shouldn't say, running around, getting out of bounds. Get, that is natural. The verse continues and says, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Maybe the reason America is full of a bunch of fools is because as children there was no rod of correction. Just something to put in your pipe and smoke for a little while. Uh, it is a sad thing in Proverbs when it presents the idea of parents having a child for a fool. It says in Proverbs 17, 21, He that begotteth a fool doeth it to his sorrow, and a father of a fool hath no joy. And oftentimes you see parents struggle, especially, you know, when uh, the kids grow up and they're no good, and they're no good, I'm talking about when they get in their 20s and their 30s, and then they're just constantly dealing with foolish adult children. That's a sad commentary, and you see it quite often. So the Bible's going to describe for us here in Proverbs what a fool is. We'll start in Proverbs chapter 12. I'll give you a few verses. Like I said, we can't turn to all of them. I'll read some of them. But let's start in Proverbs chapter number 12. A fool can be described in Proverbs as someone that's proud. Someone that is very proud. Now, it's not to say that every proud person is a fool. But if somebody is a fool, then they have a characteristic about them of being proud about some things. Look in Proverbs chapter 12. Look down in verse number 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. In other words, this fool, he sees it just like he sees it, and he's right. Nobody else can be right. 
He says, hey, man, this road, there's nothing wrong with this road. The guy standing in front of him says, hey, the bridge is out two miles up the road. Hey, man, there ain't nothing wrong with this road. I'm looking at it right now. The road's fine. I'm telling you, two miles up the road, the bridge is out. You need to listen. I ain't listening to you. I'm seeing the road right now. You are a fool because you're just seeing it the way you see it. A wise person says, let me kind of take some uh, counsel from different perspectives. That's why when you read the Bible, the best thing to do is to read the entire Bible, and when you find verses that go together, run cross-references and find out what the Bible is trying to teach you, compare Scripture with Scripture. You can get into a dangerous place when you begin to base an entire doctrine on one single verse. And so that's a foolish type of exegesis, and you don't want to do that as far as you know, interpreting the Bible. A fool is a proud person. Proverbs 18, verse number 2, the Bible says, A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. All a fool is worried about is his own opinion. He wants to put out a blog up there and put his big picture on there and his own opinion so everybody knows his opinion. I told you before, opinions are like armpits. Everybody's got them and they stink. Right? Proverbs 28, 26, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but, contrast, whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. A wise person don't just trust his own self. A wise person says, let me see what these other people say. Let me get some advice and some counsel. I'll give you a verse from Ecclesiastes. Uh, Solomon wrote it as well. He says, Better is a poor and wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. Now, the reason I point that out is because in Proverbs we have... And in Ecclesiastes, they're not just the fool in the sense of you think of just some young man running around foolishly not listening to counsel. But here in Ecclesiastes, a wise, I mean an old and foolish king. So an older person can be foolish. Now some of you, you got wisdom and you're old and you got that kind of uh, uh, position as far as your hierarchy and you can trust that sometimes too much. You need to listen to counsel as well. I'll never forget where I heard it or read it. Somebody was telling me. Uh, maybe it was a documentary. I can't remember. It was an older person that was beginning you know, to deal with some of the health issues in her older, in her older age. And she still said, uh, and she made the comment, because you know how people begin in our culture. It's a sad thing when people treat old people like they're not people. I can't stand to see nurses and people like that talking to old adults like they're children. Can I get an amen on that? Right. Hey, sweetie. Hey, honey. You're a little bitty child. They are an adult. They worked harder in their years, and you probably will in yours. Treat them with a little respect, please. I don't know if any of you older folks get t sick of that. I get sick of that, and I'm not old yet. When I do get old and they start treating me that way, I'm going to tell them, hey, i still got walking around since. My money spends just like yours. Quit talking to me like I'm a two-year-old. Amen. But the comment was made by an older lady as she was dealing with a lot of health issues and people were treating her a certain way, you know, and coming in the nursing home, doing things. She said, you know, I'm still, I'm still a person. I'm still the same soul that I was when I was a kid. You're still a person. But be careful. Be humble. Be, be, you better be humble or you'll stumble. An old person can be foolish. And the Bible also mentions in Proverbs a foolish woman. So it's not just a foolish young man running around doing what he wants to do in Proverbs. So a, fool, a foolish is described as someone that's proud. Uh, take a left turn and look in chapter 9 of Proverbs. Notice that a foolish, which is pretty much seen in contrast to the verses we saw. Notice in chapter 9, a foolish person is described as someone void of wisdom. This is the foolish woman I was just mentioning. Look in verse 13. Proverbs 9.13. A foolish woman is clamorous, she is simple and knoweth nothing. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, He who asks a question is a fool for a minute, he who, does, who, he who does not remains a fool forever. Someone that's just clamorous and they don't know anything, they're not interested in knowing anything. That's a foolish person. Just run around bouncing into this and bouncing into that and they have no sense and they don't want to learn. Proverbs 17, 24, Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. They're just looking around at the bright lights, kind of like walking a car. Oh, look at this ride. Let me go over here. Oh, there's cotton candy. Let me get some cotton candy. Oh, I want to try to win this little toy, just like a little kid running around with no sense. There are adults that way. Oh, I'm going to get a stimulus check. I'm going to go spend it. 
Somebody's going to have to pay for all this money. I don't know if you're realizing the trillions of dollars. Uh, somebody's going to have to pay. A foolish person is also mischievous. Look in chapter 10. Look in chapter 10, verse number 23. It is as sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. In chapter 20, verse number 3, it says, It's an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. That mischievous, that sport. Nowadays, it's in social media. Nowadays, it's in, I want to see everything you're doing. I'm going to meddle in your personal life. Of course, you can't blame them because people put their personal lives out there for everybody to look into. I mean, you open your drapes and open your windows, don't get mad. People are looking through there. And then you think everybody's bullying you because they realize you don't know how to comb your hair in the morning. Don't, hey, if you're putting the picture out there, why are you getting upset about it? But all this age is everybody just meddling in everybody else's business. Mischief. That's, that's foolish. God created your mind and your abilities and your purpose in life to be more than just meddling in trifle affairs. All right, so we see we've kind of got a little description of what he is, what, 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 what a fool is, but, but what, he, what does a fool have? Let's look at some parts about a fool. The Bible talks about the fool, a lot about this first one. You're in chapter 10 still. Look down in verse number 8. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating fool shall fall. Now, a pra- the word prating is used. We don't use them more. Uh, he mentions it in 3 John. He talks about they prating uh, against us with malicious words. So you know it's connected somehow to words. Uh, it would be similar to prattle or to tattle or to babble. To prate as an old English word or meaning to talk. So it has to do with chatter. It has to do with somebody always running their mouth. So here we're talking about the foolish lips. A fool has foolish lips. Uh, You're in chapter 10 still. Look down to verse number 14. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. You know, the Bible says a lot about your mouth. And the number one thing it says about your mouth is keep it shut. I think it was John Wesley, the old preacher. He would talk to somebody and he would not engage in conversation for more than about 10 minutes and he would just stop. He just made it, you know, he was disciplined. That's where the word Methodist come from. They had all these rules. Methodists were societies way before they were denomination. They had all these societies all over England and all over America. And, of course, their preachers were not ordained. They couldn't give out the sacraments, what they call sacraments and all that kind of stuff, because they weren't ordained clergy because they were still a part of the Anglican church. So they were societies, and they sprung up everywhere, even over in England. And they had these societies, and they had this, these disciplines of things that you are supposed to live a certain way because you are a Christian. And one of, one of the things was you need to watch how you talk and how much you talk. You know, the Bible says, "...in the multitude of words there wanteth not sin." You know, to be in wants, to be in need of. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Wanton is someone that is, they're, they're, they're craving after something bad because they're in want of. So in the multitude of words, they're want if not sin. That means if you talk a lot, you're going to wind up and say something you shouldn't say. A foolish person has foolish lips. Uh, look in chapter... Chapter 15. We'll look at a couple in this chapter. Chapter 15, verse number 2. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge around, but the mouth of fools, look at this, poureth out foolishness. I think of a maybe a gutter and it's raining and here's the spout and it's just pouring out. It's just spewing out. It's like their mouth just... Blah, 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 kind of like, you know, the news. You know, they'll have some kind of press conference, and here's the, the political figure giving his speech, and as soon as he's done, they get on and tell you what you just heard. Uh, didn't I just hear the guy? Now you got to tell me what I just heard. Just blah, 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 kind of like what I hear when I hear them people talking. It's like the Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown adults. They're just talking and talking and talking and talking until right now there's stuff going through the air, going through your head, these these radio waves, these news waves, these TV things are going through all these channels and all these people are just talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. Look down in verse 14. 
It's not only about the, what comes out of the mouth, but look at verse 14. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools, look at this, feedeth on foolishness. It likes to hear it as much as it likes to say it. Look in chapter 17. There's so many, so many verses, we can't look at them all. Look in chapter 17, come down to verse number 7. Excellent speech becometh not a fool, much less do lying lips a prince. In other words, a prince is supposed to have excellent speech. He's supposed to be courteous with his speech. He's supposed to be direct with his speech. He's not supposed to lie. But a fool is just the opposite. A fool is just going to say what he thinks. You know, oftentimes things have digressed. And, and even myself, I have digressed when you think about us being in this movement in which we are in, in American history, where our speech, we don't think before we talk. And even oftentimes as preachers, we think just because we have an opinion about something, it's time to get in the pulpit and share it. Uh, I have a job and a responsibility to preach a message that God's given me from the Bible, not just stand up here and share my opinion about everything under the sun. That's similar to a fool. A fool just gets up and talks off the cuff about whatever he thinks. Just because you think it doesn't mean you need to say it. You're in 17 still. Come down to verse number uh, 27. 1727, he that hath knowledge spareth his words. That's something to think about. And a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Verse 28, even a fool when he holdeth his peace is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. In other words, if you open your mouth, you're going to let everybody know how stupid you are. The best thing to do is just keep your mouth closed. And they'll think, man, he's, he's, he, probably knows, he probably knows more than he's letting on you're like, and you're standing around somebody and they're talking about all this technical uh, equipment or something like that or something you don't know. You just kind of sit back. And, yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 5, he says, A dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. <laughs> Now look, I understand. I've been around people. I always call it the talking disease. When, and, and if it's you, I'm not trying to be mean to you, but there are certain people that have more of a propensity. They just can't seem to shut up. And I'm not, I'm, I know some people, I think it, it, you know, it has some psychological, physiological issues probably. Uh, but the Bible gives us some parameters in Scripture. And some people talk more than others. I get that. Typically, girls talk more than boys. Now, you that have raised boys and girls, y'all can probably either give me a nod or tell me I'm crazy or whatever. Um, and typically, women talk more than men. You know, the problem with men and women is, as far as coming home and having problems, the guy, he's at work. He's already used all his words for the day. He comes home, he's done. <laughs> and the woman, you know, let's say she's at home or whatever, she's got plenty of words left. So the reason he's not really wanting to engage in conversation, he's already played out anyway. Just trying to give you guys some help out there. Amen. Uh, we just don't talk as much, typically. Now, I know the exceptions prove the rule, but typically it's like, you know, like you can notice that if you, you have phones and you look at men's text versus a woman's text. A woman's text can be all these paragraphs. I'm thinking, if you're going to do all that, why don't you get on the phone and call somebody? If you're going to type, type a whole book, a guy will say K. He'll use the word for K instead of saying OK. The quickest, the best. I thought it was supposed to be convenient. I know it may come off rude. I know you can't get the feeling. And I know that's where there's problems with all this digital junk because you can't get the emotion behind it. And you can say, what did they mean by that? They meant what they said. What did they mean when they meant what they mean? I don't know what they meant when they mean when they mean when they meant it. I have no idea. And so you have to be careful with all of that stuff. A fool will just keep on chattering and talking. A fool uttereth his mind, Proverbs 29, 11, but a wise man keepeth it in until after. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. I will say this about a high political figure in our country today. If he would just maybe shut up a little more, he wouldn't get himself into trouble. You know who I'm talking about. I'll leave it at that. All right, foolish lips 
And then we have foolish eyes in Proverbs 17. Are you still in 17? Flip back to 17. Look down in verse 24. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. I may have quoted this earlier. In other words, it's just like bouncing from one thing to the next. Because the fool's mind is not concentrated on God, a fool can't stay focused. A fool's ears, Proverbs 23, verse number 9, it says, Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. And that leads me to say about a fool's heart, Proverbs 12, 23, The heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. And then it says in Proverbs 15, 7, The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. So this brings me to what I was saying earlier, and I, I sidetracked myself. I know people have propensity more so than others to talk. Different people are different. Some people are more clams. Some people need to learn to communicate better. Let me get it, help you ladies out. Amen? Some of you men, you need to learn how to communicate a little better and share what you really mean. We're bad about bringing our emotions out sometimes and really speaking and being clear. So there's different levels of that, but God would not have put so much emphasis on talking and foolishness and fools if we, in some level or not, where we are, cannot control it. God has given us boundaries and guidelines under the power of the Holy Spirit of God. We can yield to God's Word. This idea, well, this is just the way I am. I have to be rude to everybody. It's just the way I am. No, you're not supposed to be rude. I just, I just can't help it. I'm just mean. No, you're just sinful. That's your problem. The problem is not just the lips and the problem is not just the eyes. The problem is the heart because that's what he gets into. So what does the fool do? Well, a fool lets everybody see his own foolishness. Proverbs 10, 23 is a sport to a fool to do mischief. We covered that earlier. In Proverbs 13, verse 16, it says, Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. That's why I say this generation of social media, where everybody's putting their dirty laundry out there for everybody to see, it shows that you have a nation full of fools. I know you're not going to get rid of the stuff. I'm not saying you, you are. Preachers preached against radio when it came out. They preached against TV when it came out. They preached against telephones. They preached against computers. They preached against every, all of it. It's not going away. It just gives you another platform to display your foolishness. Amen. So, well, I know people use it for good. Well, you can, use, you can use an airplane for good. You can use it to run into buildings too. What does that prove? I'm just telling you, the society in which we're living in is a society based on the biblical description of a fool that as a whole, I would look at a society and say, it's a society full of fools. But here, I took my door off my car, and I just want to show you on this video here how to do it. Now, you've got to make sure you have the right... What, what, what are you doing? I'm glad they do. You know, for some things, I need to have a you know, how-to, how to take my car hinge off my car so I can, you know, go mudbogging or whatever. I can find a YouTube channel and find some guy who spent two hours setting up a camera when he took his car door off just to show all you crazy people out here how to take your door off. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Wacko. Well, here, I just want to let everybody see my new tile floor. This Ain't it pretty? Yeah, I just picked it out, and I went to Lowe's. I'm going to show you what happened. Here's where I was at Lowe's, and this is the picture. Now, when you go to Lowe's, what are you doing? You're going to show us the new toilet seat you bought and how to use a toilet properly next? I mean, where, where does this stuff start? stop? You are d dealing with an insane country, an insane society. You say, what are you talking about? I just gave you verses. A fool goes around proclaiming their foolishness. A fool, what does he do? He lets everybody see his foolishness. Number two, he scorns reproof and correction. Proverbs 14, 9, fools make a mock at sin. Proverbs 15, 5, a fool despiseth his father's instruction. Proverbs 17, 10, a reproof entereth more into a wise man than an hundred stripes into a fool. Okay, so let's look at this. A foolish person is so full of himself and he's constantly putting out all this stuff. He's using his mouth to put out foolishness or to feed on foolishness. So therefore he can't take in any reproof or any rebuke.
A fool can sit in front of a TV or a computer for two and three hours, but if the sermon goes long, he, he's, he's about to go crazy. That shows you the difference between a wise man and a fool. Uh, a Christian, uh, somebody trying to seek God will want to feed on the Word of God and the time will get away with them. A foolish person will want to feed on all the things of this world. Scorns reproof. Uh, a foolish person also gets out of control with their anger. And boy, you talk about anger problems in this country. Man, you know, they came up with the years ago, they talked about going postal. You know, I guess it was probably a post office worker was one of the first ones that went in there and just took everybody out. But, uh, you know, people just getting, getting to the last straw. I can't imagine in some of these jobs where you have to work maybe in a factory where you're standing there, you know, for four hours and you go take a break and come back. I, you know, I probably would, you know, wind up setting a bomb off and blow the place up too. I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I can understand the stress in our modern society. There's some things that are putting stress on you that's a whole lot worse than physical stress out there digging a garden. I really believe that. However, we're dealing with a society and even Christians that cannot control their tempers at all, full of anger and hate. And oftentimes the anger that they have is not righteous Anger against sin or against wickedness or against the devil. It's anger against trivial stuff. Like road rage. You ever think whenever that happens to you, and I'm sure it never happened to you, but uh, it's happened to me before. I've got some very vivid cases of it. And uh, then after it's all over, you think, why did I let something as stupid as two or three minutes get this, get me so out of whack. Or somebody pulling in front of me. What about this, you know, when you, everybody's got to get over because they're working on the roads, and then the guy goes all the way to the front of the line. Don't you love those people? Or, is that, or am I talking to some of those people? <laughs> he goes all the way to the front of the line, and then he, whenever I see that happen, I get as close to that guy in front of me as I can, so he can't pull over in front of me. So what happens? He goes up ahead of me and gets over anyway. It, What's the big deal? A fool gets out of control with his temper. Proverbs twelve sixteen. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. Uh, chapter 14, it talks about a wise woman builds her house, but the foolish plugeth it down with her hands. Chapter 14, verse 16, the fool rageth and is confident, so full of himself that he thinks his cause is just. I've been at airports where I've missed flights. And I'll never forget, there was one case, one time I missed a flight, and I'm running up to try to get it, and this guy's running up behind me, and he passes me, he goes to the same counter. Before I can get up there to try to see if I can get on, he starts letting out the expletives. And he's chewing this girl out, and she's just, you know, standing there doing her job. She doesn't control the plane. A fool rageth and is confident. Here's another thing. Look over in chapter 26. There's so much on this. We can't cover it all. But look in chapter 26 of Proverbs. When you begin to unpack the elements of what makes up a fool and all these things that go through the mind and how they get into the heart and how they begin to bleed out into the character, you realize some of these things are pretty serious. Detrimental, actually, in society. That's why we're seeing the the garbage that we're seeing taking place today. Look in chapter 26 and notice this. Look in verse number 1. As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. So here we're dealing with issues of character. Somebody's not honorable. And I'm just going to say it like this. You can't trust a fool with responsible things. You just can't trust them. And it doesn't matter the age. I know sometimes we kind of harp on the younger generation. I'm sure some of you older folks, when you were kids, I'm sure the older people talked about your generation. It's always that way. However, individuals, when you talk about certain individuals, when they are foolish, you better not trust them with responsibility. It's a dangerous thing. Look in the same chapter. Come down to verse number, look in verse number 3. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass. Look at this, a rod for the fool's back. 
Verse 4, we'll get into, well, we'll skip 4 and 5. We'll come back to that in a second. Look at verse 6. He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh the damage. The legs of the lame are not equal, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. You can't trust a fool. He's not going to be responsible. You're going to just talk, 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 talk. You know, it, it, I, I am amazed now sometimes when people are responsible. You know, we have some people that have been doing some of our air conditioner work around the church here for the past few years, and they've been very good. They have a good team. Uh, they've done some quality work for us. Uh, I, you know, I've known some of the people that, the owners and things like that. And that is a rare thing. When, when, you, when they tell you they're going to be there, they show up. Because nowadays when somebody says they're going to be there, you just go ahead and say, well, they're probably going to be late. I mean, that's just, you, we're just, we've just kind of grown in our modern society. It's like if you go to the drive-thru, just say, hey, give me whatever you want because I know you're going to anyway. <laughs> no need to tell you how many pickles I want. You're not going to put them on there. Here's $20, fill up the bag, give me something. Because the irresponsibility. Those of you that deal with, with uh, detailed jobs, maybe construction type jobs, uh, trade type jobs, I know you get frustrated with people that do shoddy work. We dealt with that doing remodeling around here. Man, we had a big deal when we did this remodeling back five, six years ago inside of here. And I literally, I was about like a fool losing my temper with that guy over these pews and all that kind of junk. And uh, we had already tore up everything getting ready for, oh, we can't come till next week. No, you said you were going to be here. We tore the whole stinking platform up. You're either going to be here or we're canceling the deal. We canceled that part of the whole contract and we did it ourselves. You get so sick and tired. Look, I'm not an, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. Not really a jack of all trades. But I get sick and tired when I realize I don't do this every day and I could do a better job than you. And we're paying you. Me and Brother Howard, man, we're not plumbers at all. We had to fix some jobs, job of so-called plumbers. Me and Brother Howard did a better job than they did, didn't we, Brother? Yes, After we about got electrocuted that day. <laughs> Oh, we blew that 220. That was fun. My teeth are still black from it. But the idea is you can't, the fool can't be trusted with responsibility. Look in chapter 21. I've got to wrap this up. You can't preach but so long on fools. It's amazing how much Proverbs deals with this. Because there's a comparison between being wise and being a fool over and over. Proverbs 21, come down to verse number uh, 20. There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise. In other words, they got a bunch of it. But a foolish man spendeth it up. You can't trust them with responsibility, and you sure not better trust them with money. Here's $100. Go bring me the change back. <laughs> You're not getting any change back. Fools know the price of everything, but the value of nothing. Now, the Bible tells us in chapter 26 about the damnation of a fool. It's a sad commentary. In Proverbs 26, it says, As a dog returneth to his vomit... Verse 11, so a fool returneth to his father. I mean, that's a vivid, nasty, gross thing, and you've all seen it if you have dogs. It's like, no, 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 don't eat that. <laughs> it's amazing the things they will eat. I will stop there. But the idea is that it's like you've, you've had this big thing happen to you, and it's bad, and it's something that should have shook you up. It's something that should have taught you a lesson, but you're going back and doing the same thing. Now, I will say this, all of us have fallen prey to doing foolish things. I said it at the beginning, you aid me in me, I hope you still aim me in me now. Solomon himself said in the book of Ecclesiastes, after having all that wisdom, he said, you know, I was no better than the fool. Because the thing is, is not, you do not need more intelligence and more information and more knowledge to make the right choices. Listen to me. Solomon had all the wisdom in the world. He still made the wrong choices. You need temperance. And you need convictions. And you need discretion. Solomon had all the wisdom and he said, you know what, I fell prey to it. I went after the women. I went after the wealth. I went after all the things. And I came up empty. Even though I knew better. But a foolish person... They keep making the same mistake. Boom, boom, boom. I'll never forget when I used to do juvenile detention centers and I preached to those kids, I'd say, raise your hand if you've been in here three or four more times. 
and half those people go up. They just keep slapping them on the wrist, slapping them on the wrist, slapping them on the wrist. They're not going to learn. You, you hate to be fatalistic. You hate to be pragmatic about it, but you say, okay, go ahead and just lock them up then, just leave them in because they're going to be in and out of the system forever and you're just going to take care of them the rest of your life some way or the other. A fool just goes back to the vomit. He mentions over in Second Peter about those foolish false prophets like Balaam and those people that uh, they have been better of them not to have heard the way of righteousness after they'd heard it to turn from it. Now, how do you deal with a fool? Go back to 26 and look at these couple of things. The Bible tells you in Proverbs 17, let a bear robbed of her whelps meet a man rather than a fool in his folly. It would be better to meet a bear that's looking for her cubs than to run into a fool. That's a pretty scary thing. I don't want to meet a bear like that, but that's the analogy here. You can't reprove a fool. They will not listen. Proverbs 17.10, a reproof entereth more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. You try to beat it into him and he's not going to listen. 17.16, wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom seeing he hath no heart to it. His heart's not in it. He's not listening. Uh, what do they say? Unsolicited advice is never heeded. You try to tell a fool, he don't want to hear anyway. It's a waste of time. Now look in Proverbs 26. This is a great couple of verses. Verse 4. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Don't even engage in certain circumstances with their foolishness. It's just circular arguments. It's just bantering back and forth. When you start throwing mud, you lose ground. That's the old saying, right? It's just a waste of time. However, look in verse 5. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest to be wise in his own conceit. There are cases where you need to shut him up. Bob Jones Sr., the old preacher, he used to say, if they don't listen, ridicule them. And that's one way to do it. You do it by reverse psychology. And it's similar to this verse. You answer him according to his folly, lest to be wise in his own conceit. You try to show him how much of a fool he is. And see if he'll, he'll listen and wake up. Take a young person that's maybe been hanging around the wrong crowd and say, okay, you're going to spend a night down here in the jail cell with these guys. Just one night, they're not going to touch you, but you're going to know what it's like to spend a night in a jail. That'd be, that'd be some good, uh, um, uh, whatever they call it, reprimands as far as judges go. Instead of doing community serv service, let them sit in a jail. Oh, we couldn't do that. Yeah, you can't do nothing nowadays. Take them down to the hospital and make it. Let's say they were drinking and you caught an underage kid drinking. Here's part of your sentence. You're going to have on Friday and Saturday night, you're going to spend it at TMH and, the, and you're going to have a, uh, a police officer. You know, they always have officers down there. They're going to be your chaperone. And any case that comes in that's alcohol related, you're going to have to uh, observe the situation of the people that come in. And you see several people coming in, and some of them may be even dead. Even better than that, you take them to the morgue, or you take them to places like that and let, the, uh, let them show dead carcasses where people have died because of alcohol. Well, they're not going to do that. I'll tell you a good one. Show them the end results of venereal disease and AIDS. They're going to put the condom dispensers at FSU in the hallways so they can grab them on the way to the girls' dorm. Why don't you have pictures of what, it ha what happens when you get venereal diseases? Just show them that. They're not going to do that. So you want to shake up a fool? Answer him according to his folly. Now look, man, you keep living like that, you're going to kill yourself. You keep going the way you're going, rejecting Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. I'm not telling you that because I want you to. I'm just telling you that because that's what's going to happen. But they won't listen. You can't discipline them. Proverbs 27, 22. It says, Though thou shouldest bray a fool in mortar among wheat with a pestle, yet will not his foolishness depart from him. A pestle was like a hard wooden tool. Kind of like you see them in the cooking shows. They're breaking up those spices and stuff with it. You, 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 they won't listen. Advice in Proverbs is to forsake the foolish, Proverbs 9, verse 6, and live. Proverbs 13, 20 gives advice 
A companion of fools shall be destroyed. He that walk with the wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So, if you're around some people that are influencing you and you know they are foolish, you know they are bent on, bent on folly, you better be careful because they'll pull you, pull you away. Proverbs 14, 7, Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. So that's the admonition. I'm not saying that uh, just like in Proverbs, he says, train up a child in the way he should go. And he says, uh, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. We all have a tendency to err on the side of being foolish. And if we give heed to God's word, God can do something with us. But we need discretion as we deal, quite frankly, with a nation full of fools. It's just crazy when you think about it. And look, I know I'm just putting everybody under the same blanket. I mean, you're dealing, think about it sometimes in this respect. You're dealing with a country that takes the little kids and says, okay, there is no God. You evolved from a single-celled amoeba, and you were just nothing, and there is no God. Well, if there is no God, why are there any consequences? And you begin to look at a whole nation and a whole world that's been on this, and it's destined for destruction. It's a sad commentary. Folly of fools. We need to learn from this and hopefully quit our foolishness. Paul talks about that some in these epistles. He talks about foolish jesting. And look, I like telling jokes, having fun. I think that's good. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. If you can't laugh sometimes, something's wrong. Some of you need to go listen to Jerry Clower. Woo! Oh! This thing's killing me. Shoot up here in the midst of us. One of us got to get some relief. I mean, some of you need you need some laugh every now and again. Uh, but just constant jesting, constant comedy, constant foolishness is not a good thing. It's not the wisdom of the Word of God. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the Scriptures. Thank you for this survey. Lord, it's kind of exhaustive, but it's real hurried as we went through it. I pray, God, you'd help us to uh, let some of these things soak in. Help us to see these signs and to spot them, not just in other people, but, Lord, help us to spot these characteristics in ourselves. Lord, if we can't examine our own hearts, who are we to be examining other people? Lord, it's easy to point out the sins and everybody else, but, Lord, to step back and say, you know, I have some of these traits Lord, help us to fall under the rebuke and reproof of the Word of God and to be wise and to have discretion, to have temperance and to realize we can go in the mistakes of a fool and we can be a companion of fools if we're not careful. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you for this book that just opens up and sheds light on everything we see around us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a guide and giving us all these truths. I pray that you might bless us, be with us the rest of the week. These requests that were mentioned tonight, some of them pretty serious. God, we pray you might meet those needs. Help our brothers and sisters as they go through the struggles of life. Lord, help all of us. We need your guidance and direction. We are living in perilous times. Lord, I pray you might help us and guide us. We do love you and thank you for saving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.